It's December 2017, a few days before Christmas. That's when we all decided to escape to Key Largo, Florida, where it's a balmy 85 with everyone walking around in flip-flops, shorts, and t-shirts. Yes, that's right, folks. You heard right. We're here to dive. Most of the best diving in Key Largo, Florida is only a few hours by boat from the shore. Here we are visiting a couple of dive sites around the reef. Throughout these past few months, and especially during September of 2017, hurricanes Harvey, Jose, Irma, and Maria contributed to the largest amounts of accumulated cyclone energy tracked in a single month than any other time in recorded history. Such powerful storms can wreak havoc on coral reefs, damaging marine life and devastating whole underwater ecosystems. So it is understandable then that most dive shop and dive center owners here in Key Largo were concerned about what would happen to the reefs following Hurricane Irma. After divers scoured corals at several area reefs, they were relieved to find that, fortunately, everything looks great. There is some minor noticeable damage, but way less than what everyone feared. Coral formations here in Key Largo are well known for their abundance of fish, from impressive schools of blue-striped grunts to the colorful queen angel fish. The U.S. government established the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary to protect the marine habitat. Preserving the reef is a top priority, and for good reason. There is not a more versatile marine destination in the world than what you would find around Key Largo. There are coral-encrusted shipwrecks and intricate natural coral formations that may take weeks, if not months, of diving trips to fully explore. The coral reefs off Key Largo are both patch reefs and primarily a spur and groove configuration of bank reefs. Most of the patch reefs are three to four miles offshore and offer wonderful diving opportunities because of their shallow depth and profusion of both juvenile and adult marine life. Most of the scuba activity occurs along the offshore bank reefs at depths of 20 to 35 feet. It is along this extensive reef line that the greatest concentrations of coral are found, not to mention some of the clearest waters and impressive fish populations in the world. Visibility typically ranges from 25 to 100 feet, with average water clarity of 50 feet and a temperature range from 70 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter to a balmy 85 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. The most frequently visited dive site in the Key Largo National Marine Sanctuary and likely the world is known as the Molasses Reef. Named for the cargo of a wrecked ship, probably the Sabadna run aground here in 1887, molasses is typified by huge schools of grunt and gray snapper, the windlass left behind by the Slobodna, and high-profile coral heads populated by all manner of Caribbean reef tropical. Some of the fish are not even necessarily Caribbean, for there are a pair of Indo-Pacific batfish, probably aquarium discards, that have for years coexisted with their cousins, the Atlantic spadefish.
it's always a pleasure witnessing in what I'd always thought to be the most intelligent creature underwater. The octopus. Caribbean spiny lobster is the most common lobster around here. It can grow up to about 23 inches in length and up to 12 pounds. Meet a juvenile great barracuda. The barracuda doesn't have eyelids. When it's still, it appears to be asleep. Do not scare it, you may regret it. Floridians even have their own special Christmas trees that live underwater in the colorful offshore reefs. Of course, they are not real trees per se. Instead, they are called Christmas tree worms because of their distinctive shapes beauty and colors and the fact that they can also be easily spotted from far away. As I bring the camera closer to these colorful looking little organisms, you can see the tiny Christmas tree worm quickly withdrawing into its hiding place inside the coral. Because the molasses reef juts out into the cleansing waters of the Gulf Stream, on any given day this reef offers some of the best visibility anywhere in the Florida Keys. Our first dive here was a bit shaky with poor visibility and strong current, but the second time was excellent. The visibility was probably the best we'd had throughout this week and the current was close to none. It was a great day for underwater photos and videos. This stingray doesn't even mind being on camera while scavenging for her lunch. One of my first diving specialties was peak buoyancy. When diving along reefs, holding cumbersome gear, trying to get close to a fish, it pays off.
Meet the French angelfish. It generally varies from gray to black in color, but the scales on its sides are all bordered with a touch of yellow. In one of the sections of the French Reef, we had the chance to see several stingrays. The yellow stingray is a common species in these waters. Tim Grolleman, a photographer and author of Yellow Stingray Population Declines in the Keys, What Does It Mean?, takes on the subject of the decline of the yellow stingray population by associating it to changes in trophic interactions, whether it is them eating or themselves being eaten. He believes that the goliath grouper as a protected species has also resulted in the yellow stingray's decline. To me, I like to see both during my dives. I have been free diving, fishing, and snorkeling since I was a kid. When I used to tell stories about my encounters underwater with these creatures, I would also describe the sounds and noises that I had heard. It may sound strange and a bit exaggerated when you are trying to tell someone that you heard a fish eating or swimming away or making some other type of noise, but here you go. Get quiet for a moment and get ready to hear this. I may have been lying about the size of the fish that I was describing and what they looked like, but hey, at least I got the sound right. During World War II, near midnight on April 9, 1942, the Norwegian merchant freighter Benwood was on a routine path from Florida to Virginia transporting a load of phosphate rock. It was running with no lights to avoid being spotted by German U-boats, which was common for ships during the war. But the Benwood wasn't the only ship in these waters running completely blacked out. The Robert C. Tuttle, an American freighter ship traveling to Texas, was also running without lights. The two ships collided and the Tuttle ripped open the Benwood's starboard side, quickly sending it to the bottom. The ship was deemed unsalvageable and was later used for target practice by the military. Then in 1975, the Benwood was finally deemed a protected site. This is a wonderful dive for intermediate divers since it is in relatively shallow water and can be explored completely in one dive. An abundance of wildlife has overtaken the wreck over the past 70 years. We were lucky to dive here twice. The visibility was great. We got to see more fish around here than in probably the five other dive sites combined. The shallow dive allows an entire hour of diving off of one tank. It's the best time to try different camera settings and to get to capture those great shots. Gliding over the scattered metallic structures of the shipwreck feels like flying over a surreal science fiction site. In almost every little hidden corner and under every metal platform, there is something to see. Schools of snappers, porkfish, 
mullets, groupers, and parrotfish thrive around here. But how can one dive in Florida and not miss out on the superstar of them all, the green moray eel? It sits down there staring up at you, all the while taking a breather from the hunting shifts it's been doing around the wreck. To tell you the truth, this is the only creature I think more than twice about before getting too close to capture on camera. The Florida Keys region was known for its large population of green turtles decades ago before they were hunted by humans to near extinction worldwide. An encounter with a sea turtle on a dive makes the entire trip worthwhile. These special encounters prove the uncertainty of a turtle's behavior, at times skittish, simply swimming away quickly when glancing at the diver, and sometimes just the opposite. I was lucky to be able to get a nice selfie with my friend here. Swimming with and interacting with this beautiful, interesting creature on a coral reef was undeniably one of the greatest joys of diving in this site. It's a nice morning and we are headed out for a deep dive. We'll be diving in the Spiegel Grove, roughly five miles offshore. This is one of the greatest deep dives any diver will ever log on their books. Diving beneath this massive 510-foot wreck is a pretty intimidating yet exciting experience. One could spend a week in the Keys and dive around nothing but the Grove, visiting a different part of it during each dive. The ship is enormous and much larger than any natural reef structure in the Keys. In fact, at the time of its sinking, the Spiegel Grove was the largest ship ever intentionally sunk to create a new reef for divers, and it remains one of the largest ships ever scuttled for that purpose. Almost immediately after the sinking, the ship began to attract marine life from large groupers to schools of shimmering smaller fish and colorful tropical fish. Marine scientists expect natural corals to eventually envelop the Spiegel Grove.
There's some current at the surface, but down here, it's mild. We stay somewhat at deck level, but other divers hurry to drop deeper. With its ladders and railings, this part of the ship hosts a bigger marine life caliber. Predators like the barracuda and the jacks roam the waters around the upper deck. This little adventure with my brother and my nephew was a great Christmas gift. The Sea Dwellers staff and crew were great and made those 12 dives a pleasure. Key Largo has a lot of diving to offer and we need a lot of that. So we'll be back for more. <laughs>